Good morning, everyone. Uh, the Institution Innovation Council, in association with Nitty Institute of Communication, is organizing a special talk on interaction pro a special talk and interaction program on a guide to the new trends and innovations in technical writing. Uh, technical writing is a new promising platform, not just for uh, the media professionals, but also for all domains where uh, sharing of knowledge is involved. Everything will not make much sense starting from idea generation, innovation, and uh, industry application of innovation if the end users are not informed well. That is where technical writing gets its importance. So to elaborate more on this topic, we have arranged you know, this program. The well-experienced senior most personnel from uh, the United Kingdom and the United States of America have joined NITTE dim to be University today. Uh, they will share their thoughts with us as our honorable, honorable Vice Chancellor of uh, NITTE dim to be University, uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Satish Kumar Bhandari always encourages us, uh, we have organized this program. From his encouragement, we, we from IAC and NICO have created this platform to all of our students and faculty of the university. Also, uh, special thanks to Professor G. Shini Ketan, president of IAC to make this program uh, happen. So uh, we will go ahead straight uh, to the program now. I request the head of NICO, Professor Raviraj, to welcome the guests of the event. Over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Nesra. It is uh, uh, indeed, uh, uh, you know, a right time to discuss uh, uh, innovations in uh, technical writing, especially uh, in last uh, decade, we are talking about the development of AIs. Uh, we are now talking about metaverse. Uh, these are the things that are being talked about in the industry today. So in this context, we also wanted to, uh, you know, our students and the public to know about uh, what technical writing, uh, you know, means uh, in the AI era. Uh, and thanks to uh, IIC and NITE uh, team to be university uh, to conduct such a wonderful event. Uh, uh, to begin with, uh, our uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor Dr. Satish Kumar Bhandari. Uh, he has been the backbone of the university and he's been extremely supportive to all our uh, events and programs. Uh, sir, on behalf of all of us, sir, uh, we welcome you to this event. Uh, next, uh, two of our resource uh, persons, uh, Ms. Radhika and uh, Ms. Usha. Uh, they have uh, taken their time out uh, in the busy you know schedule i understand there is a you know time difference uh, you know between uh, india and the uk and us in spite of that you have uh, agreed to uh, talk to our faculty members talk to our students uh, uh, thank you so much and uh, on behalf of uh, nitte dim to be university on behalf of iic and on behalf of uh, nitte institute of communication we welcome both of you thank you for coming I also uh, want to extend my warm uh, welcome to Dr. Sh uh, uh, G. Sriniketan, uh, who's been consistently pushing us to come up with uh, innovative programs, who's also been pushing us to talk about uh, entrepreneurship, uh, introduce entrepreneurship uh, within the uh, you know, curriculum, and also talk about uh, you know, how to uh, uh, manage these new ventures. So there have been a lot of events in last uh, couple of months, those who are planned uh, at the university level. So uh, this is, part, you know, this particular program is also part of that. And uh, we hope to see many such more programs in the future too. On behalf of all of us, uh, Professor Sriniketan, we welcome you too. Thank you. Uh, we also have uh, uh, with us uh, our uh, uh, marketing person, Mr. Vivek Pai. I hope he is here. Uh, welcome to you too, sir. On behalf of all of us here, I also welcome uh, all our faculty members uh, who are watching the live, live streaming and also all our students who are uh, watching live streaming on uh, YouTube. Uh, over to you, Nesra. 
thank you very much sir uh, now i will ask our uh, honorable vice chancellor uh, professor dr satish kumar bhandari sir to give uh, his opening remarks over to you sir very good morning and uh, good evening to uh, ms usha and uh, ms radhika from uk and usa thank you very much for uh, joining us uh, virtually uh, due to this covid pandemic kind of pandemic situation we could not invite you to the campus uh, thank you for joining and enlightening us in the regarding new trends and innovations in technical writing Uh, the president of the institute innovation council professor shrini ketan and head of the our communication school uh, professor ravi raj and the moderator and architect of this particular uh, meeting webinar which has been organized uh, dr nesara and mr pai and uh, the all the member coordinators of our institute innovation council faculty of uh, nite institute of communication and the students and faculty of nite and all the participants in this very interesting program organized by our uh, institution innovation council in collaboration with our uh, communication school it's my privilege to be part of this program because uh, it is very apt that uh, this particular issue is being discussed today the technical writing and uh, two very uh, senior experts in this field senior technical writer is usha and uh, principal te- uh, technical writer from usa ms radhika are joining and uh, they are speaking about the recent trends in the technical writing um, as you all know technical writing encompasses a very largest uh, sub field of uh, technical communication nita university and nita educational trust as you all know it we have got the more than 36 institution under our trust spread out in three campuses bangalore nite and in mangalore and we have got varieties of programs starting from nursing school to medical from polytechnic to uh, engineering and humanities to uh, uh, electronics and uh, varieties of finance and management so being a very multi disciplinary university and is very appropriate that we are discussing about technical writing technical writing uh, is nothing but a drafting technical communications used in technical and occupational fields and, and it's very very relevant for us because the faculty and the students who are participating in this uh, uh, webinar will definitely benefited by the recent trends as ravi raj said we are going to the age of artificial intelligence and uh, a lot of things internet of things or a uh, uh, lot of things are happening in the digital world i think uh the good old things we which we are we are employing earlier may not be uh, feasible or may not be practical or it may, may not be very effective in technical communications i think as uh, I, i was recently i bought a cycle to my grandchild and uh, i didn't know how to assemble it so then i had to go to the internet and look at that particular product and uh, i got audio visual rep- uh, in- information about uh, Uh, assembling that uh, bicycle similarly happened when i started my house we when we bought a furniture and we didn't know how to assemble it so we have we had to uh, get somebody from the company and assemble it if i had known how to do it with the audio visual aids i would have done it uh, quickly safely and without any hazards so these are the things which are have, uh, fast evolving in uh, technical writing and technical information technical writing provides a context to products and process allows them to use it very safely and as intended and as uh, effectively so it uh, particularly for the end users it is very very important if you talk about simple in simple words the our uh, consumer products and the applications are very wide and uh, for a university it is very very apt that uh, it is uh, employed in various areas like it may be writing reports and communication day to day business it may be in technical papers it may be in mag- magazine articles books thesis writing uh, in for the purpose of education teaching and sharing of information and knowledge so there is and particularly patents i think the being a university we have got uh, we are daily writing papers or uh, 
uh, intellectual property rights and trying to get patents published or accepted for publication. So we have got uh, the writing part of this particular patent is very, very important to be accepted by the authorities. So even uh, as I said earlier, operations manuals or instructions, if, you are there, if they are not written properly, and if you write a very huge elaborate uh, manual or operation manual or instruction, it may not be uh, read by the consumer. And naturally, the product may not be accepted by the people. And writing these manuals or communications also very important. I was going through the what are the skills required for these uh, people engaged in technical skill writing. I understand communication skill is very, very important. I think Usha and Radhika will agree with me that this is very, one of the very important uh, soft skill uh, where people should develop a uh, communication skill. And that also is a part of the technical skill. Apart from the technical skill, we should have a research skill, we should have a writing skill, editing skill, and uh, design skills, I think. Now, nowadays, designing is also a very important part of the uh, technical writing. And ultimately, and uh, uh, to summarize, we should have a teamwork. And it's not a, a single person cannot uh, complement the whole process of technical writing. And we should have a good teamwork. And uh, I think these are the things which is going to be discussed in this uh, very interesting webinar by two very dynamic, talented uh, uh, ladies, Usha and Radhika. And uh, I think they are definitely they are going to talk about the new trends particularly now slowly we are shifting from product center centric to end user centric and users are to be benefited unless users are benefited no point in discussing about the product so in, there are so many examples what we can which we can quote when you are talking about the user centric how the companies which you made it user centric they succeeded when people concentrated on products they failed in uh, getting the market so i think these are the things definitely will be enlightened during this webinar and the challenges making it audiovisual i think these are gone where we are where we write and people start start now looking at the audiovisual uh, information i think the written part is slowly disappearing unfortunately i think there's a role for audiovisual learning this how to make it more impressive more crisp more shorter and more uh, quickly absorbable by the end users I think, uh, unfortunately, these are all this uh, gradually are going for a, di a digital transformation. Unless the people, the people who are going to write technical writing, they are uh, well informed, well educated about digital transformation, which is happening in this field, which may not be uh, feasible to absorb this very, very evolving area of technical writing. I hope a guide to new trends and innovations in technical writing by Usha Mandya from Ratika will be very, very informative and all the participants will be benefited, greatly benefited and they'll carry very pleasant memories, memories of this webinar. Wish you all the best. May God bless you. Thank you very much for giving this opportunity. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your uh, wonderful insights. Uh, now, the honor is mine to uh, introduce uh, our guest today. Uh, Usha Mandia uh, is a a good friend of mine uh, was my classmate in uh, master's degree program uh, in Mysore from uh, Mysore University of Mysore. Usha has uh, over 13 years of experience in uh, technical writing. She started her technical writing career in uh, Bangalore and worked at Oracle and uh, two and off, uh, for uh, two and a half years, of course, uh, before moving to uh, the United Kingdom. She's currently working at Docker in Cambridge, uh, United Kingdom. Before Doc Docker, Usha worked at various organizations in the UK, such as Duche Bank, and then later at uh, Citrix for seven and a half uh, years. Usha holds a bachelor's degree program uh, degree uh, with a uh, gold medal in English literature. Uh, she then completed her master's degree in uh, mass communication and journalism with uh, first rank and uh, four gold medals uh, from uh, the University of uh, Mysore. Outside work, Usha loves reading Kannada and uh, English literature. She also enjoys hosting uh, Kannada cultural events in uh, the United Kingdom and loves to travel uh, 
uh, with her family a lot. Uh, thank you, Usha, for uh, joining us today. Okay. And uh, uh, Miss Radhika loves to call herself a technically oriented technical writer and a community enabler. She is passionate about uh, open source technologies, and her contributions have been uh, featured at uh, evostory.com, uh, uh, blog.fission.io. Uh, uh, she has built and managed open source uh, communities and has contributed to well known open source uh, foundations such as Genome, ASF, and uh, CNCF. Radhika currently works at SysDig. Uh, San Francisco as principal technical uh, writer. Uh, Radhika holds a bachelor's uh, degree in uh, computer science and a master's degree in uh, mass communication and journalism from uh, the University of uh, Mysore uh, and has completed a bachelor, a post bachelor degree program uh, in information science from uh, Columbia University, uh, New York. When uh, not working, you no, know, she unlocks her artistic carnival and attempts, you know, at creating art that, you know, she loves. Uh, thank you, Radhika, for uh, uh, joining us today. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for the uh, opportunity. Welcome, uh, uh, Radhika. And those who are watching the program using YouTube link can uh, drop your questions in the comment box. And the members of IAC can ask their questions using uh, Zoom chat. We will pass on. Uh, the questions to the resource persons. Uh, now the forum is open for open to you, uh, Ms. Usha and uh, Ms. Radhika. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. And uh, hello, everyone. And uh, thank you so much for the opportunity and you know such a uh, introduction by uh, initially by Professor Ravi Raj and also by uh, Professor Dr. Satish Kumar Bhandari. So it's so great to know, like, you know, how much you've all kind of like, you know, we all use technical writing uh, in day to day, and especially the vice chancellor's notes about using technology, you know, getting some instruction manuals and, you know, trying to get things done himself. And then notion of like end user versus product centric design and like um, the digital transformation. It's, it's amazing. Uh, thank you so much. So let me start uh, sharing my screen. So let's get started. So, um, yeah, I hope you can all see my screen. Let yes, me know. Yes. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. So, um, yeah, um, this is a great opportunity to talk about like the trends and the skills, like the, the innovations in technical writing. So even before we go there, so let's take a look at um, what exactly is technical writing. Most of us may be new to this process. Evolve, um, evolution is like a continuous process, right? So we can't stay stagnant. We have to evolve with technology. So thanks to the, the technology, we are able to meet, though we are in, located in different geographies. So we're able to meet and convey this information to you all. So uh, many of us may be new to this field of technical writing. So let's start by taking a look at, you know, what exactly is technical writing and how that compares to different forms of writing and where exactly do technical writers work. And let's, we'll also assess like uh, certain qualities of effective technical communication. There are a few things that um, uh, our vice chancellor has already touched on, like the, the design and the communication aspects of it. Let's see which of these, like, you know, technical writers employ on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, finally, we'll come to the crux of this session, which is the trends and innovation in technical writing. We'll understand where the, the industry, the technical writing industry is moving towards. And then what are the new trends and how do technical writers work? Do we write 100% all the time or do we interact? Or how do we use the modern technology to make our lives easier and then to, to provide like effective technical documentation to our end users? And finally, um, for those of us who would like to understand, you know, Am I qualified to become a technical writer? We will, we will uh, cover those areas and give you uh, some pointers that you can, or questions that you can ask yourself to say, you know, whether you can become a technical writer. And then also we will give you a lot of learning material that you can go back and take a look at and learn at your own pace. And we will also share um, our email, like in case you would like to get in touch with us, you can also like write to us and you ask any questions that you have. And the format for today's session is like, I'll be covering some slides and Radhika will also take over. So we will like do like, like an interaction between us. 
if you have any questions, as uh, Dr. Nesara previously said, please drop it in the YouTube comments and we will address them uh, at the end of the session. So let's get started. Um, so what exactly is technical writing? So most of you may have like read some manual about how to get something done, or uh, maybe you've installed WhatsApp on your machine, like on your mobile and you were trying to get some feature that wasn't working, right? So you try to understand how it works. So basically, technical writing is all about communicating complex information in a clear and concise manner to a specific audience. So the audience part is very important here because um, it depends on the terminology that you use and the way you write, depending on who you're writing to. So if you're writing to an end user who is uh, using WhatsApp, you would use like the, the kind of vocabulary that you would use would be different. Whereas if you're writing to an engineer uh, creating virtual machines and deploying them to the cloud, the terminology that you use will be different. So basically it's trying to uh, make the complex technical information easier so user, your end users can understand it. So some examples here are, for example, you've installed Zoom on your mobile, but you'd you don't know, like you're stuck during the installation process. So you would try that out. Um, you will read the instruction manuals on how to use Zoom on your mobile. And then at some point, uh, many of us maybe may, were concerned about the security aspects of WhatsApp. And then we wanted to know whether Signal was better than WhatsApp. At which stage, many of us went to the web and understood what were the differences between Signal and WhatsApp? What are the benefits of Signal over WhatsApp? So all that kind of information is written by technical writers. And if we go a little uh, um, towards the technology, we have what is called a single sign-on. So how do you set up single sign-on? We will cover that in, an, in the example. So uh, what exactly is single sign-on and how do I use it? And how do I create and deploy virtual machines? These are some of like, just to give you an idea of what technical writers write about. So comparing, to, comparing technical writing to other types of writing. So in technical writing, as we say, the essence is to like make the complex information clear. So we use in a very, we convey that information as as simple language as possible using as fewer words as possible, and then make making the end user understand what it is about. So what is the problem we are trying to solve, and why is it a problem? Maybe you are trying to use a feature of WhatsApp, and then you are not able to do it. That could be probably because you don't have the right version of WhatsApp installed on your mobile. So you're troubleshooting in that case. So uh, communicating that kind of information to your users, and then it must be understandable by your users. And you don't have to flaunt your vocabulary. You don't have to just use all the words that you know here. The essence is to keep it simple and it's result oriented. It could be installation of certain things or deploying something or assembling something. So there's like a task or a result at the end that you're working towards. Whereas in creative writing, we write for entertainment, we read for entertainment. There's an emotion that uh, evokes when you read some um, creative, like, you know, a, a feature, for example, and it's, it's to entertain. Whereas technical writing is not to entertain, it's to accomplish a task. And also when compared to academic writing, so an academic writing goes towards in depth about, you know, maybe the protocols, and maybe as you, um, as NITE, you, we have like um, nursing and medical and engineering and multidisciplinary university. So there may be scholarly articles in different fields where you talk about, uh, like you talk about a specific language, a specific topic, and you go in detail about that. Whereas technical writing, again, is like, it's not about research, it's about accomplishing a task. So um, let's take an example of single sign-on, which I previously mentioned. So single sign-on uh, is like a badge, right? So let's think of it like the classic example for single sign-on is your Google ID, your Gmail ID. You use it to um, for your Gmail. You also have your Google Photos. You have your Google Drive where you have all your files shared and many more applications that are kind of part of the same uh, group, right? So you have the same ID which is your username or email ID and then password. Let's call it credentials. So use this credential to log into multiple applications. So in technical writing, to convey this information, we would say single sign-on means you don't have to sign into every application. You just sign in once, but you're automatically signed into multiple applications using the same credentials. However, when you talk about single sign-on in academic writing, it's more about, you know, you talk about protocols, 
like how it's implemented, everything. For the end user, how it's implemented doesn't matter. All they need to know is how do I use single sign-on to log into multiple applications? Um, and then this is just an attempt by us um, on um, uh, like, talking what a single sign-on if we were to or like and describe that in a in a creative word. So it's it's like you step once in and you're embraced everywhere you set foot in. So there's like a flowery language involved here, metaphors involved here, whereas nothing like that exists within technical writing. It's all about making your users understand what they're trying to achieve. You don't read technical writing as a bedtime story. You write to accomplish a task. So um yeah, so I will now hand it over to Radhika, who will uh, walk you through the next set of slides. Radhika, um, take it away. Uh, thank you, Usha. Uh, that is a great introduction to uh, what is technical writing and uh, what kind of um, writing we are involved in and things like that. Uh, so let's step back. Uh, so back in the days as kids, we dreamed about becoming an astronaut or a pilot and so and so. But we know that not everybody can become a pilot or an astronaut. But being part of this industry also is equally noble and an interesting part. So that is the beauty of this profession. As technical writer, you can be part of the uh, domain or industry that you are uh, passionate about. So the important part is that your technical background or degree is not important as your interest in the domain or in the field. All what you need is able to grasp the technology or whatever domain you are writing about and be able to write clearly and concisely and in a uh, uh, user-friendly way. If you look at our background, I have bachelor's in computer science and uh, mass communication and uh, uh, Usha is from uh, uh, English background, but we both work in the same domain that is containers. So that itself shows that, you know, the kind of background the kind of education or the, the degree is not important uh, to be able to work as a technical writer. The most important thing is like, be passionate about the domain you are writing in and uh, be, be able to step into the user's shoes and understand what their problem is there, problem they have in hand and what problem they are trying to solve and how you can help as a technical writer. So, like, we call it the bridge between users and product, and we create, we gather the complex information and transform into easy to understand uh, content that consumer or audience can uh, understand. So, as I said, like, writers can, technical writers can work in any domain. So, Though, like, there are several areas, uh, as far as we know that it's uh, software and engineering field is the most lucrative field, though uh, you can work in business or government or medicine and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So mostly uh, 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 in medical field, uh, you, there are like two uh, uh, spectrum of things. One is mar marketing side of things, like where you create a uh, uh, brochures and marketing uh, materials and uh, uh, content uh, blogs and so on. That's the marketing side of uh, uh, writing in medical field. Like it could be for the pharmaceuticals or it could be uh, for the, uh, the medical tools uh, and so on. And on the academic or uh, technical writing side of things, uh, it might be... Um, um, say like uh, use cases like there are like uh, several uh, tools that you use how to use those tools uh, you know medical equip equipment or it could be like regulations and standards uh, uh, in medical field uh, and it could be an inspection report or uh, you know uh, use use cases and uh, 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 case studies about uh, different uh, 
uh, you know, uh, illness and things like that. Uh, when it comes to business, uh, it's it it could be a proposal writing, uh, which is nothing but it elicit a business response. And in government uh, field, it could be, or even in insurance writing, it could be in inspection uh, reports or administrative guidance uh, or policy and procedure document. Uh, and in science writing, uh, there are like. Uh, there are like several magazines and online publication you write, you can write, uh, you know, uh, in depth academic uh, paper science uh, 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 articles about a particular topic, uh, it could be like metaverse, that's the most, uh, you know, happening term uh, these days, it could be about COVID if it is a medical, uh, uh, it, even if that is Though it is medical, it's the it's a bigger uh, domain is science, so it could be uh, uh, you know COVID. Uh, so there are like several uh, opportunities for technical writers uh, to venture into. Like it's all depend on what you are interested in, what's your passion, and uh, and put your love uh, into that. And all what you need is the writing skill, uh, ability to grasp things fast and, uh, uh, you know, work in a team. And uh, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, so though we are, there are like several areas uh, uh, that where technical writers can perform. Uh, in this uh, particular session, we are focusing on uh, uh, software industry because both of us are working in software industry and we are more familiar with uh, technical writing in software uh, field. Uh, Usha, could you uh, skip to next uh, slide, please? Okay, so let's see what we write. Okay, we, you know that we write technical documentation, but what do we write? So let's step back and look from uh, audience, say that, uh, think that like we are, uh, we are looking for some information, like what kind of information we normally look. So you don't like for leisure reading, you don't go and read a TV manual or user manual, right? So either you have a problem in hand and you want to, uh, you know, solve faster and you don't have the time, you are like frustrated to the core and like, uh, you know, say, for example, you try to log in uh, to your laptop and you're seeing blue screen and what's going on. And you might be chatting with your friend and like suddenly, uh, you know, you don't see that blue stick sign. Am I blocked or what's going on? And personally, I have this habit of like, you know, removing my WhatsApp and people like come and wish me on my birthday and I'm not responding like, like people and then like search you know, and come to communicate and like, Radhika, you don't, I wished you on your birthday and where were you on WhatsApp? So they were like, they thought like I blocked, you know, you didn't, they didn't see that tick mark. So I said, sorry, I didn't inform. I was, I removed WhatsApp. So these are the things that, you know, in our uh, normal life, we face like issues like, you know, uh, you know, the blue tick mark or like blue screen and so on. So so we have a problem in hand and you're coming uh, to see like what's going on. So it's mostly like, uh, you know, how to log into, uh, 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 so how to like resolve a blue screen or uh, like, what do you mean by uh, uh, different uh, like green tick mark or uh, uh, gray tick mark and tick mark with one circle or blah, blah, blah. So, so how, those are the simple things that I can like, uh, you know, various scenarios that as, as a user will come and, uh, you know, search for information. And another scenarios would be like, say, uh, a new uh, tool came up like Signal. So what a Signal, what is all this about? Like, why do we people talk about Signal and how, okay. So you go and search Signal and what comes up is like, what a signal, why it is used, and uh, why should you use a uh, signal? What are the benefits? And uh, what are the features, like how you can compare a uh, uh, signal with other type of communication, communication channel tools, like say WhatsApp and uh, 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 Facebook Messenger and uh, Google uh, Chat and so on, Hangout and so on. So those are the stuff that technical writers talk about a particular product. What this product all about? Why should you use this product? What are the features? And then comes 
say like you have a problem so so that's for a new uh, 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 users so now you are familiar with the product say like you know you have been using uh, whatsapp for long and say uh, you hit with a problem say like you are not able to chat with somebody so you go and search like what's going on so that is like you are solving a problem so how do you solve like so say for example uh, Okay, I'm keep on saying about that blocking part, but let me move over from the blocking part. Say like, uh, so Usha has mentioned like a uh, uh, security aspect of uh, um, uh, WhatsApp, like so two uh, two factor authentication. So there is like, say you are logging to WhatsApp and uh, you have a extra layer of security by like, say you can set up an extra layer of security, like uh, you can uh, set up a face recognition so that only when WhatsApp see your face will be able to, uh, you know, uh, see the chat. So that is an extra layer of security. So like, how do you set up, you know, uh, uh, face recognition uh, authentication? Or how would you set up, uh, you know, second layer of authentication using text? Say, for example, you try to log in uh, to WhatsApp and you don't want anyone else to log in but you. So you can uh, have a authentic like have a text authentication and there are scenarios like troubleshooting like say you are using windows and you you are not able to use a particular app so you are like wondering oh oh god like okay i'm i'm i have a meeting now i'm trying to log into zoom why zoom is failing on windows so you go and search like zoom is exiting on windows so you will see step by step instruction to say like how to you know troubleshoot that problem and that is involves the product aspects but when it so that's not limited uh, for for technical writers it's not limited to product so there are areas like that's more engineering side of thing like api docs apis are not nothing but like say two applications have to communicate with each other and have to share data so you might have be you might be familiar with uh, uh whatsapp for business so you if say say for example you have a website and you want uh, your customers to come and chat with you uh on whatsapp web so you can integrate your website with whatsapp so for that you use api and so to 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 have that integration set up, you can use API docs. And there is like product specification docs, like, so you like, like as, as uh, product managers, like who are the owners of product uh, will go to uh, customers and ask like, what are your problems? What are the requirement? And they collect all the uh, problem that are facing and they try to create a feature you know mapping to those problems those uh documentation is called product specification doc what are the features uh customers are requiring what are the uh, specification like what what version of the platform it should support uh what version it should be like what are the other aspect they are looking for and things like that and code comments like you know uh source code will have instructions and like what this particular line of code uh, is written for so sometime like for api docs we uh, use those code comments to uh, uh, automate documentation generation and then ui strings uh, so uh, uh, usha could you show uh, docker ui strings so those are very really great ui strings uh, we see in market so you can take them yes, through the second. docker so, yeah, sure. um... You have to stop just one second. So while just Usha take, here. yeah, sure. While uh, Usha starts Docker desktop, I can also talk about KB articles. So that is KB articles is knowledge base article that is, you know, focus on specific customer problems. Say like you hit with the Windows uh, blue screen, how to solve. That's a, just an example. Okay, let's see uh, UI strings. So Docker is the application, uh, you know, it it it's manages containers. So they have one of the best UI strings that 
Thank you. Uh, you see can you see my screen, Radhika? Can you see it? Yeah, 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 I can now? see. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so you yeah, can this take, is the uh, application. Yeah. Um, so, so the technical writers are also involved in contributing the, the text for the UI user in, uh, interface elements. Like, for example, there is uh, a line here which says send usage statistics. So you also contribute towards the description of what exactly it is. So it sends error reports, system version and language as, as well as like life cycle information. And then we have like some CPU resources, like what is it like file sharing, and then if we go to some experimental features, clicking this will enable all the experimental features within this application. But again, like uh, for someone new, they may not know what exactly it is about. So um, there is a description and the technical writers also contribute towards this. And then this is troubleshoot. Um, each option has a description which says, what is the restarting Docker desktop? What do you mean by resetting Kubernetes cluster? And then what do you mean by purging data? So all that information is also um, like, it's usually the designers who come up with this and then they ask us to curate the content as well. So um, technical writers also contribute to such um, user interface um, text. Thanks, uh, Radhika, do you want to take one? Yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, and uh, you can see feature proposals and design docs, that's mostly engineering side of things. Like, uh, um, so it's, Usually engineers write about feature proposals, uh, what does, how they are designing uh, a particular feature, say for example, uh, WhatsApp single sign-on or uh, uh, two-way authentication. Uh, design docs is like how you uh, design a product, like what are the features and uh, what, um, in what um, software, your what what like java or python or what uh, you know software uh, programming language you are writing and uh, what versions of other uh, you know dependencies and things like that it's more of engineering side of things uh, sometimes technical writers also get to involve in this uh, pure uh, you know um, engineering uh, doc uh, writing so could you uh, skip to next one yeah so how do we write? So of course, uh, we cannot write until and unless we understand the audience who are uh, this, who are the people who are using this product. And unless and until we use the product the way the customers use this product, we have to install, uh, we have to go through each steps that uh, a particular uh, user will go through and understand the uh, use cases and problem areas and so how, how does uh, you know you step into a customer shoes and uh, follow this use cases like each uh, use uh, you know use a scenario say like installation configuration if it's a whatsapp it's an easy example so so you might access whatsapp through your uh, iphone or android phone Maybe you uh, maybe you will access through your desktop. You can install WhatsApp on desktop or through browser. So you have to and even browser different browsers. It could be like Chrome or uh, Firefox or uh, you know um, Internet Explorer. I, I don't remember the new word for Internet Explorer. So different browser you might have to test and see like how uh, uh, WhatsApp work for these uh, different. Um, uh, um, uh platforms so this is and and also understand uh like what is the context in which uh customers are uh, gathering uh, this information so if your desktop you are using a desktop to chat with your friend friend like and then you are hitting with a problem like how you access uh help materials of whatsapp and make sure that in those areas you include uh you know help and when you click help it will go to the uh, documentation site and testing is not enough you talk to subject matter expert the engineers who write the code you develop the product and the product managers who go who go, who go out and talk to the customers and the field engineers who help install and configure the product uh, within the customer um, environment 
and you also get to uh, do audience uh, research and competitive product documentation for example if you're writing for whatsapp you should also go check like how documentation has written for say uh, um, google hangout or google chat or signal and other similar zoom or other similar communication uh, channels to see like how people are perceiving or consuming this uh, information uh, how they are uh, responding and uh, how the entire uh, in user information is structured and uh, presented and what is the tone and what's the style and things like that so that you can also see like what best fit for your product and in addition you develop content strategy that is not that itself is a long uh it's a it's a it's a uh, a big subject which require a one session or multiple sessions so content strategy is not uh, nothing but you decide what content should go to what custom what who to what audience and at what time and uh, you know the full content delivery is not just documentation the blog and uh, all kind of uh, content that videos and uh, anything that have content and that would reach to audience could be uh, social media where you you know you you tweet something with the content and how it reaches and when you have to tweet and somebody has written written a blog how to reach uh, how to increase the reachability of that blog by you know going social and things like that and as a technical writer you are a product project manager as well you have to design and plan your product delivery from uh, you know from uh, uh gathering information until uh publishing so you gather information uh you plan what uh tool and what document you have to develop what sections you need what chapters you need and you have to set the milestones and you have to talk to subject matter expert and understand when you have to deliver this content some product will have different uh you know release cycles it will be beta release alpha release before going uh you know final uh production so for each milestone you have to plan like what document what feature should go with this beta release or alpha release and what customers it's going and what features are going what features are not going what feature you should expose to customer and what features uh, you should in expose so as technical writer you are not just technical writers you are a product managers and you are a customer themselves you are designers you are a project manager so as technical writer you are doing you know almost all the uh, uh, roles within a software in a software company and plus you create illustration for the content like so as humans we are visual than you know uh, we love looking at images and videos than like you know reading a like a one page content so when content is supplemented with particular aid like instruction i mean uh, with uh, illustrations it appeals to the reader so you as technical writers you you create illustrations and you decide like what color you should use and what icons you should for warning what kind of uh, icon you use what if it is a simple note what kind of note so you design illustrations and uh, capture images and uh, you know aid the content you are developing so that it's easy for the user to understand uh, that complex information so it could be like very difficult instruction i mean uh, a complex product when you give the information with you know with mapping and you know how the flow is going it's easy for the customers to uh, understand uh, could you uh, skip to next one so let's come to uh, okay we spoke about how do we do and uh, what are the things we write and so this is so this is a it's again this this topic as well we condensed into single uh slide which itself require multiple sessions so what are the characteristics of effective technical documentation again the most important thing thing to remember is as technical writer you are a customer advocate you have to be uh with you have to you know be in uh, the customer's shoes and look at the product so 
think from the customer uh, perspective, you are looking for some information, you are frustrated, you have to get it done, you don't have the time in the world, you have to finish this and do something else. And you are so mostly you reach a technical documentation when you're frustrated enough, right? So it should be easy to find. If you were not able to find, you cannot solve the question. People hate you know, grabbing phone and calling customer support and listening to all the music and you will be in a queue and then you wait for like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. No, you are frustrated. You will may not be using that product, right? So think from that perspective and make sure that it's easy to retrieve and make sure that you organize in such a way that it's easy to find. And as I said, as human beings, we, we are our brain is appealing to our visuals. Make sure that you add uh, audios and videos and uh, illustrations so that it's easy to find. So um, Usha, could you click the organization so we can show WhatsApp uh, help? So it's a very good example for how information is organized. So if you look at, you see like how help center is organized. So you have general, uh, and you have, if you are an, and again, when you click general, it, it tell you like how to download and how to install and how to verify, you know, your phone number and uh, about account and profile, how to set up your profile and everything related to chats is, so you can see like instruction is, is organized in a coherent way in different, put it in a different bucket so that it's easy to navigate and easy to locate the exact information you are looking for. Say, for example, you are an Android user, you don't have to like go to a, a iOS section, you can directly go to Android and look for, and you have to, you are looking for something pay, payment related, you can directly come here and look at payment, you don't have to like, you know, go around and check other places and waste your time. So you can see that it's beautifully organized so that as a user, it's easy to find because you see that major buckets, how, you know, how coherently, uh, you know, information is like put together so that, you know, it's easy to uh, uh, find. And uh, uh, could you click one, maybe uh, security and privacy? I think there is a video and, uh, uh, seeing waiting for the message i think or one of them let's see like how they have organized so look at this how again like I, I talked about organization it's not just the help center uh level when you come to the topic level itself it's a uh, uh the organization matters so first they have explained what is could you just scroll down so i just want to see up uh, so if uh i mean up <laughs> the first part yeah so let's talk about how to change the group privacy setting. So let's talk about like, what is the scenarios where you have to change the group privacy setting? And then comes to how to do that and see how they have organized for Android. This is the way you do this. iPhone, this is the way you, you do it. And Kai OS, this is how you. So, so they are organized in a particular way that Android customers can like, won't be confused with the information uh, you know, associated with iPhone. And if you look at the second step, so everyone include, so how this privacy setting work for everyone, for my contact and my contact expect, when you do some exclusion, how this privacy setting work. So you can see that how beautifully uh, the information is organized in the topic level itself, so that whoever reading this information can easily grab and understand. So let's go back to our slide. So that's about like how easy to find. So once you find it should, it should be easy to understand, like is the information you are given is clear enough? There shouldn't be any room for uh, ambiguity. So it involves all the grammatical, uh, you know, grammar and language comes into play when it's, uh, it, it's related to clarity and concreteness. Uh, once you write, write in a similar way. And uh, concreteness is about like, give all the information, nothing should be missed. If one step is missed, 
the user will not be able to complete the task in hand. So say for installation, and if you're trying to install a Windows uh, update, and if one step is missed, the installation will fail and the task in hand will be failed and the customer is frustrated. So make sure that all the information is uh, given with examples so that there will not be any room for confusions. And style. Style is like every organization will have a style, uh, uh, in-house style. So uh, like what kind of terminology you use, like every product has its own terminology and how you use. So for example, virtual machines, like virtual machine is nothing but you can, in your laptop, you can you know, run multiple platforms, like you can install a virtual machine and then uh, log into a Windows machine or uh, uh, Linux or iOS. So it can run multiple uh, virtual machines on a single machine, that's a virtual machine. You can also call as instance, in some cases, uh, some uh, organization call instance. So you have to mention like in your particular style guide, like what, how do you refer to virtual machine in your company uh, information? Otherwise people will confuse. And how do you structure information? Like what chapter should be included in installation guide? And how you structure release notes, like something new, like when a new uh, release comes, new version is out, like what are the uh, 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 new features? What uh, defects are you fixing? Do you include a defect number or not, or just a defect description and things like that. So every uh, company has style house and you have generally available uh, style uh, like Chicago manual style, Microsoft manual style and so on. And most of the companies will have a subset of uh, these, uh, you know, uh, publicly available style guides. So even like newspaper will have style guide the way similar way, uh, you know, software industry will also have style guide. That's for to follow the branding and style for your organization so that your customers know like what, you know, they can expect. So it's easy to find, easy to understand, then easy to use is all the information you have given is correct. So in, in a different version, your steps will be different, instruction will be different. Make sure that you give the correct updated information so that people will not be confused. And uh, are all the information is given. If some step is missing, they cannot complete the task in hand. And, and when you write, so, okay, they have a problem. They're trying to install or like solve something and something you're, they're trying to configure. Make sure that they are, we are give those instructions are given in a task oriented way. So like when it's, uh, you know, structured in a procedural way, it's appealing to uh, the user's uh, intent to completing a task. So make sure that you make uh, those instruction in a procedural way, structured way, like uh, with a uh, imperative way, like do this, do this, click this, uh, skip that and install this, you know, you are giving action statement, not an essay. So it should be simple enough, straight to the point and only those action. And, 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 and in the next sentence, if you have to give some examples or code snippet with appropriate example. So it's in, this is very condensed uh, description about characteristics, but in general, these are the things, whether the information you are writing is, whether it is easy to find, easy to understand and easy to use. And then, uh, you know, the information you are uh, writing will reach the intended audience. So could you skip to next? Uh, okay, so tools, like, first of all, tools, there are like several tools that you use. First of all, as technical writers, it's not important that you know all the tools. So I have learned all the tools at work on job. I when I joined, uh, you know, the first company novel, I didn't know any tools I learned on job. So there are several tools like, uh, for example, Markdown or authoring. Markdown is nothing but uh, unstructured authoring. I mean, sorry, semi-structured authoring. So. Um, before coming to semi-structures, you all are familiar with the Word document. So Word document is unstructured because uh, uh, there is not, actually you can consider Word as a semi-structured because you can 
add headings and uh, um, subheadings and chapters and so on. Um, and uh, when it comes to markdown, you can like, you know, you can play around a bit. Uh, and uh, there are unstructured authoring, uh, like say, for example, Confluence Wiki. So why unstructured is like, you can play around. There is not stringent rule for a title or a paragraph. You can use those things anywhere you want. But it comes to structured authoring, say like there is a chapter uh, element under chapter, only set of, uh, you know, elements are allowed say for example under chapter there can be a heading underneath heading there should be a paragraph only without paragraph you cannot insert a table and there are stringent rules like the way you structure uh, a content so for word you can insert a section anywhere and you can you you can insert a table anywhere it's same way markdown also a kind of uh, semi structured uh, so Usha, could you show uh, probably GitHub at, at, mm -hmm. with examples could be yeah, easier sure. to understand. Uh, sure. So let me meanwhile log into Paligo so that I can. Yeah, okay. So I'll give a very quick overview of good, GitHub. So this is GitHub. This is um, like a source repository for code. So we have our documentation maintained and managed and uh, like created, maintained, managed and deployed as code as well. So for all the documentation that we have is stored in this repository, like, um, so this corresponds to the docs that we have on our website. So that's, um, so this is the live site that you can see here, docs.docker.com. Docker is the, the company that I work for. This is our documentation. So all the content in this, like for example, like get started or anything that you click on. So the source of these will be um, located in this GitHub repository. And we manage through what is called a pull request. And this is how software um, is usually managed these days. And we'll get to that in a minute. So we do it through pull requests where any change is like created through like a pull request where the maintainers go and approve. Um, and then like which gets merged and then published. So that's GitHub. And this is like Markdown, which is another tool to write. So we, I usually, we uh, like Markdown is like the, the, the format and I use Visual Studio Code um, to write content as well. So um, I'll just like click on um, some docs. Uh, so so that gives like uh, like if I if I'm looking at any specific file. Sorry, it's taking a while to load. So that's about like, you know, some, this it has like some metadata defined, all that again, like it's like, it's very easy to pick up. So this is how we write like two hashes means like a heading, heading two, and then a star means like a bulleted list. So there are some sets defined in Markdown and this is just a, like Visual Studio Code is a tool that uh, we use at Docker to write content. And then like, this is how you add links, like you know, there are relative links within the docs as well. And uh, like, again, like three hashes means like heading three. And yeah. Um, so over to you, Radhika, do you want me to yeah. show anything else? Yeah, um, I can show uh, Paligo probably. Let me share my screen. Um. I'm looking for share screen. <laughs> okay. Can you see my screen? Okay. So this is an app. Uh, this is an application. This is a tool that we use for um, at my organization. But we have recently moved to GitHub that uh, um, Usha showed. This is structured ordering. What structured ordering means? Uh, only set of elements are allowed you can only install you see you cannot see a table here you can either add a subtitle a paragraph another section a note of caution or a figure or itemized list like this there is no table so that is very stringent rule okay now here after entering a structured uh, 
uh, itemized list, if you search for a table, it allows to enter a table. You see that? So there is a, a strict rule, what element, these are the elements. This is section, title, this is the topic is section, and section should have a title. Title should have either paragraph or like itemized list, or like I've shown you other elements that, that elements that are allowed within underneath this uh, element. So this very strict rule uh, when it comes to unstructured content, it's XML based. So what we are trying to do is like trying to say is that there are different tools. It's easy to pick up. Uh, it's um, you don't have to worry too much about the tools per se. It's easy to pick up and uh, all that you have to worry about how you, you understand the product and how you write in simple English and think that like writing in simple English doesn't uh, come off as a less of an expert, right? Uh, so you don't have to like flowery language and like, you know, very uh, arcane language to show your English off. Okay, let me stop sharing. Let's go back to our session. Like we still haven't reached our crux of the session yeah. part. Yeah, um, I'm just like wondering about the time as well. It's kind of like yeah, probably we will yeah, finish it off like more quickly. So uh, let me share my screen again. So um, right, uh, Radhika, did you want to, to yeah, cover you, anything else in terms of the tools? Uh, no, you can oh. take it over. Okay. Yeah. Cool, thank you. So yeah, um, so this is kind of like, you know, like the new trends that we're currently moving towards in technical writing. So mainly, as I said, like, you know, we uh, or the industry has started writing documentation as code managing and maintaining it easy because like all the engineers, and this is especially true for the IT industry because all the engineers also are in GitHub. So they have their source files, which is the, the software in GitHub. So if the process is easier just for that sake, um, we also manage documentation as a code and it's it's easier and it's effective and it saves. Once you learn the process, uh, it's very simple and you're not tied into like a, um, enterprise tools. It's all open source, meaning it's free. And then you could just um, use the open source tools and modify based on your um, requirements. So again, as I said, like I showed you GitHub, so probably I won't go through that um, a lot. So this is where our, our, we will share the slides if anyone would like to know more. So we manage through like pull requests, which means any changes to the documentation must go through like that process. And then uh, the maintainers of the repository will take a look at that content. And then depending on uh, whether it's correct or not, we'll merge the content and then publish it. So um, yeah, um, I'd like to stress a bit more on SEO, Google Analytics and heat maps. Uh, SEO or search engine optimization is about um, like making data driven decisions to improve the quality of the content and also like drive on the number of users or increase the number of users who come to your site. So there are so many tools out there and the most common ones are like, you know, we use uh, Google Analytics at Docker. So which gives you um, an insight into, you know, what are the top view pages? So for example, if I, um, show you some data that we have here. So this is the, the content or the stacks for the R documentation. So this is, as you can see on the top right corner, it is from November 7th to 13th, which is like a week's data. So we have um, like, you know, like these are like the top 10 pages, how many page views do we have and how many unique page views do we get for these pages? And also they could be like, you can try like a behavior flow to say um, how your, like users interact with your pages. So which page they click once they land into a specific page. So this helps technical writers to understand where to focus on. For example, if there is a new feature and we would like to like focus more on, you know, where to add that information, we would look at the top 10 pages and see if I add this information on this page, it will get more traction. So a lot of page uh, viewers come to this page so I can add my information here. And as I said, this is the behavior flow. So it talks about which pages your users come into. And then from there, like if I click on, um, um, 
So it tells you like from this page, how many pages they clicked further and then go. So these um, kind of tools and then understanding the user behavior here, not the product. So it's not about product centric, it's user centric these days, because we want to know what the users are doing, what are the trends with our users, so we can provide better documentation and then tell them like, you know, where exactly are they dropping off? So the red section here indicates where they're dropping off, which means, so probably they found what they want and then dropping off, or they couldn't find that information and dropping off. So we try to analyze the user behavior and modify the content based on what we find here. And they could also be like search topics. So I have provided another view here. So which talks about like all the search terms that people use. So maybe installation, they come to our page and then there is like on the home page there is a search button. So on even on the other pages as well. So they come here and search for specific keywords. So what are the keywords they are using? So we tend to use a lot of those so um, Radhika stress very um, aptly about like you know, using the right terms and the usability and findability of documentation. So we use the search terms and keywords to make sure our users get the information they want at the right time. And then the second like aspect to that, like the SEO or search engine optimization or making data driven decision is about heat maps. So heat maps allow us to like understand where exactly our users are focusing on. So for example, I clicked one of our pages. So here you can see like the clicks where exactly they're clicking. And then, um, so we understand like, you know, which pages get a lot of views or so where like the, the blue indicates like low and then like the whites and the reds indicate a lot of users are clicking on this page. So uh, for example, if I click on this, it will give like a heat map of all like the entire content. So um, let's give it a minute to load. Again, all this is to make sure that um, we are getting the right pulse of our users. So for example, this landing page scrolls. So probably a lot of users will focus on the first part of it, which is like above the fold, we call it. So as you can see, a lot of it is red in here, but as you scroll through, it gets blue because not many people are going through the, the following pages. So um, what we do with this data is we tend to provide like the most important information on the, the top of this page. So um, like get started, like download. So these are the entry points to the critical information we have on our docs pages. So we tend to provide that more. Um, and even like, you know, probably I could have like added help by product here, but based on the information we had previously. So how do I, and then we have added like the top viewed pages that we found in Google Analytics over here as well. So again, these are different tools that can help us so um, understand the user behavior and then provide um, like better content at the right time. So another example is um, as we say, like you know, Ubuntu or how to install documentation on Ubuntu is one of the top viewed pages in our Google Analytics. So what we have done um, was we have went and added like whatever new feature that we are coming up with. Uh, for example, even here. So this is one of our top views, uh, top pages as well. So um, some information that we want to capture our users attention will be added here. And even if I go to Docker engine, that's another topic. And we talked, uh, we spoke about installing an Ubuntu. Ubuntu is another operating system. Uh, it's a Linux operating system. So um, this information here, it's not on every page, but only on uh, the pages that we think are like visited by um, our most users. So we talk about you know what we are building and how they can sign up to the the preview program. So um, and there's like a link ID which we use so we can track how many users are actually clicking this and going to the blogs or going and signing up. So we know the entry points of these users. They've come from documentation, they've clicked on this link. So that helps us better understand their behavior. And also as for a company that helps us provide the, the right information, make them aware of, of what's coming next as well. So that's a bit about like um, heat maps and um, search engine. So if anyone would like to know more, probably we'll be able to touch base on that, like, um, you know, offline as well. So. Uh, Let's move on to the next one.
So um, video tutorials, as I think probably we've we have spoken a lot about video tutorials already, as like uh, our VC said, like you know, if I had like some audiovisual content, I would have accomplished the the task of um, arranging or assembling the furniture. So most of us are visual learners. So um, a lot of documentation these days are not like you know in PDF or anything. So it's about like you know bite-sized learning. So instead of reading like two pages of content, so there are like new videos, there are new video software like that's emerging where you can just concentrate on getting video tutorials, like just um, like a very, like maybe one minute video, maybe two minute video about how to complete a specific task. So you can actually see what's happening and then complete it. So again, it enables like learning at your own pace. And then you, because most of us are visual learners, it like helps us retain that information better. And that's like another trend. So um, we will talk about like doc automation and um, chatbot, Radhika, over to you now. Sure, thank you. Yeah, so as Musha said, like about video uh, docs, like my son says like he hates reading. He wants to listen to uh, YouTube and learn. So you can see like kids these days, they don't like to read. And I can uh, think of the new customers and you know different demographics they hate reading they they would love to you know see what things are going on in there in front of them and learn things rather than read and you know uh, uh, consume that information so of course we are moving towards video uh, uh, learning and uh, ar and vr virtual reality and see like how we use the product remember like so I don't know how many of you have noticed when you go and shop things like say makeup, lipsticks and all that, it will ask you to, you know, send a picture of you with uh, in light, bright light, and it shows the lipstick on your lips and see whether it is matching. So that's the kind of innovation we have these days. And you don't have to just, you can see like, uh, you know, uh, how, whether it is fitting and it's not just about the makeup it's about the watch and shoes and uh, dress everything you can so so let's come to doc automation these are some uh, um, innovations that uh, we did it at our workplace at cystic so rss feed like it's nothing but uh, syndication simple syndication a real simple syndication it's, it's what it does is like say for your website has new content how will you inform the customer that there is some update so we'll ask you if your website has rss feed and the customer has in uh, you know installed uh, a rs feed generator they can see that there is uh, an update to your website so probably i can show you an example uh, let me share my screen. Uh, so, Nes I hope you can see. Uh, so yeah, Nesara, how much to, time do we have left? Do we have like, I know we're I'll running out of time. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I'll quickly show <laughs> you. Uh, so this is a- Take uh, five or 10 more minutes. Like, uh, okay, okay, I'll yeah, yeah, thanks. quickly. Uh, show this this is rss feed uh you can read like you see that there are new 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 so that means there is some update and when you click that it will take you to the documentation uh link so so we don't have time so let's move on to uh our uh chat box so could you go back to the slide please yeah and tool tips uh um we already, uh, Usha has already showed tool tips on the Docker desktop. Um, and Docker automation is we can automate copy paste using Python script. There are several libraries available. So you can write script and uh, copy things from one side to another and write to a markdown files, things like you can copy release. So you can automate release notes, like you can, you know, write a script and grab the content from a release page and write to a markdown file and then uh, set up CI CD pipeline and push it to a publishing site. So we can explain in some other uh, session uh, in detail. So let's come to chat box. So chat box is nothing but an application. It, uh, you know, simulate a human to human conversation. So uh, best example is Alexa and uh, you ask 
what's the time alexa and alexa tell you the time and you ask what is the weather and alexa tell so this is like voice recognition uh, it's a next level of thing but in short chat box are nothing but a software application uh, it help helps to simulate uh, human to human interaction and help you uh, 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 resolve your queries and you don't have to call customer care or you don't have to search documentation you people hate searching things so easily uh the best example could be amazon um customer care you go like there is a chat box ready and it will ask you throw you some things like what order you are looking for and it will tell and and you can choose the option okay this is this this is the order uh you know uh, you are looking uh, information for. So when you design chat box, usually you write as technical writer, you write a script. Uh, so as writers, what you have to do is like, understand user intent, why the user is coming uh, to this chat box, what are his problem and understand. And what are utterance is nothing but what is his problem, okay? Uh, and what is his role and sentiment? Is he angry, it's a neutral? or uh, happy or uh, really frustrated and an entity is nothing but the product or a problem so for example uh, say like you are coming to amazon and you are looking for want to see status so and as a writer you design uh, you understand this user intent and uh, sentiment and entity and you design uh, a decision tree so for example you are coming to amazon and asking uh, for a status uh, of uh, order so how will you write you come uh, so you know okay these are the customer already in for uh, customer already placed uh, for these particular uh, orders and the options could be either understand uh, the status maybe want to return or want to see uh, what is the shipping uh, speed so if you choose uh, return so next decision tree will be do you want a replacement for this return or you want a refund. So that's a simple example for the decision tree that a particular user would go and ask the chat box. And uh, based on that, you uh, build a dialogue flow, which should be straight to the point, uh, answering only that particular question. Uh, so there are several rules like don't club uh, two answers into one, be specific, be general neutral like as you do in technical writing and give options so that help the user to you know always minimize the uh, effort from the uh, user when you uh, when they ask questions like give options like say like you're coming to amazon you already given uh, the which order you are looking uh, 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 for so that's an example for giving options and uh, you are looking for a particular version of a brand so you can it will show you different brands and things like that so due to uh we have to like look at the time so let's let's move on to next slide so maybe we can discuss uh we can you can come to us and uh yeah we can discuss more about chatbots yeah so, yeah yeah and also these probably we have probably covered like you know all like you know what's if this is right for me again um do you enjoy learning technology do you learn, enjoy yes, using technology we, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think in the interest of time, probably like um, we'll just like give yeah, us a quick snapshot. Yeah, like, you know, write like that's kind of the main thing that we would say. Start writing, even though what it like it's small, like maybe create your own LinkedIn article or just post about what you've recently got, maybe a new mobile or a new bike or something. So uh, we will share this slide. So pro hopefully these are self-explanatory. If not, we will, we have provided our, um, like some guidance about for those who are really interested into technical writing, some information here. And then we would really like to hear from you. We will send this link. And then, um, yeah, we have our e email here as well. So if you would like to contact us, we will share this with, um, um, Dr. Nesra um, as well. So open to any question anyone has now. So let me stop sharing. Uh, thank you, uh, Usha, and thank you, Radhika, for uh, the wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, yes, now the forum is open for uh, question and, and answers session. Um, we have uh, uh, three specific questions from the participants. Uh, Akshay, uh, has a question. He's asking, uh, can you suggest 
uh, ways of structuring uh, writing without making it filled with jargons which are essential or any tips to make the reading accessible to everyone that is that is how uh, is asking so um in terms of like without making it filled with jargon so it's very important to write in like simple english as we have been talking about keeping your audience in mind so you may have to use jargons for example like the technical jargons if you are talking to a technical audience so again keep in mind who you're writing to and then use like maybe as simple english as possible also another reason to keep it simple because uh, most of the times the documentation will be localized maybe like the readers are there in china they it's localized into uh, simplified english and traditional like simplified chinese and traditional chinese and maybe german so there's a lot of documentation that get localized so if you use jargons or like phrases that's only the english native english speakers know it doesn't translate well there may not be the right words that exist in other languages so it's very important to um, exclude any jargons um and then like you know phrases or colloquial language there um, if, if you um, think of jargons like that any tips to make reading accessible again as i said like you know keep it simple and then test it out with some people that's what radhika and i do on a day to day basis we write we draft content we send it for review and ask people to take a look at it and see whether they can understand as like you know our first users so hopefully akshay that answers your question um so radhika would you like to add anything to this uh probably like uh, when you feel like writing jargon keep in mind all the synonyms you can write instead of those particular jargon and uh, as usha said keep the audience in mind think whether he can understand or she can understand that particular word if not use a synonym or use another word like virtual machine versus instance that comes to mind because we keep using um so yeah jargons might not be we always one of the rule is like don't use jargons when you in the first draft you can write but when you revise make sure that you replace with the right term that your particular audience can understand yes. and structuring information yes there are like we have given some uh, helpful links please go through those links yes. it will help you uh, how to structure information kindly share with us uh, the slide you just uh, uh, presented so that we can circulate that uh, with our sure. students and uh, yeah, yeah. we also have uh, one more question from uh, chetan mg uh, from bangalore uh, he is asking there are common difficulties uh, technical users use you know technical writers face like uh, message structure uh, too much jargon as as just akshay asked uh, poor punctuation uh, inconsistency too much uh, uh, abraction uh, dense punctuation Uh, how do you fix them I, and is there any tool now uh, uh, artificial intelligence tool that actually uh, will make you uh, easy your work grammarly yeah, yeah. yeah. and acro links yeah. grammarly yeah. and acro links yeah you can embed those into your writing yeah. so at our previous company citrix so we had to use like a tool called acro links and the content had to pass a certain mark so yes. it would review the content and give you some score based on how you've written like inconsistency if you're written in passive voice it would say like you know convert it to active voice for example and over punctuation any grammar mistakes so it would like give a score based on what you've written and also you could in like input some style guide to talk about inconsistency so inconsistent consistent content helps users understand better so if you're fed like when i say bold it means you write text when i say like containerization or a virtual machine it means that so the tool already knows what it is and then makes you like write based on what you've already like fed to the system yes true uh thank you oh uh, sure sneha from uh, bangalore uh, is asking uh, what would be the future of technical writing uh, previously it was uh, just print later uh, uh, we saw content uh, for av platforms now it is dominating the web how would be the future uh, that is her question that's a rhetoric question <laughs> okay the future what i would say is like you need writers that for sure uh probably you will be more aligned with engineers it's, it's happening um uh you might i think there are several writer who still go and uh, you know 
review the code comments there are writers who write scripts automate things um you know work in hand in hand with engineers like most of the tasks that engineers do and uh, i can see a uh, inflation uh, writers going inclined towards you know like there is a kind of uh, alignment with engineering uh, that i've noticed in the past couple of years five six years like for example doc as code that usha explained like we are tools and our process is aligned with uh, engineering like how product is developed how product is shipped and uh, even writer starts writing scripts um developing tools like chat box you know like uh, when i studied info science uh, one of the program one of the class we are asked to develop chat box for facebook chat box for uh, uh, twitter and you can all use these things how to do sentiment analysis on social media you know those all require uh, you know um, ai skills and machine learning you know data uh, digging things so you learn those algorithms and how to structure it's not very difficult it's a python it's easy to anyone like anyone can quickly uh, uh, you know pick up so i've seen like writers are like picking up those tools and programming language and writing and of course like virtual reality and uh, you know multiverse and you as writers writers always required like you have to like uh, you know massage the content and produce it so writers are not going to die but the way you like deal with content might be different the the the, the tools might be different that's all that's what i think so how do you comment on this uh, usha um, yeah so um i would say like you know as like given our backgrounds right like radhika did computer science i did like yes, yes. english history i learned history economics english but today we work aligned with engineers kind of read code and write their processes so um learning is a continuous journey and then writers are not kind of like you know stopping themselves thinking i'm a writer i don't want to read code or write code so aligning with engineers and how the technology is embracing and you know moving towards new uh, like trends right catching up with new trends so um like ai is like kind of dominating everything like internet of things yes. so writers are still required like that human touch is still required to curate and then for example the ui text right like if you just give a bot to write probably that would be different but analyzing sentiments and then making sure how a user interacts with this um, like you know uh, the product is is really important so the lines will be blurred currently like we are overlapping slightly with engineering slightly with designers slightly with the product management so the probably the lines will be blurred and then it's kind of like a mixture of you need a different skill set like it's not just writing it's communication it's the way you learn so um all that will be required for a technical writer going forward and we just have to catch up with the, tra- the trends and the recent technologies yes well uh, thank you usha and uh, thank you radhika for uh, the wonderful presentation i hope uh, our students will make uh, and you know uh, make use of it now i'll ask uh, uh, our president uh, professor j sri niketan to deliver his presidential speech over to you sir honorable vice chancellor and resource persons uh, uh, usha and radhika dr nesra and friends um i thought they are only good doctors document writers they are also excellent oral communication yes. for a layman yes. like me on technical writing they have presented excellently on behalf of the nite university first of all i must thank both usha mandya and uh, radhika for their excellent presentation and uh, thank you both for accepting our invitation on thanks a lot for the opportunity sir. thank you uh, on the topic of this technical writing because i was just uh, my grandfather used to every week take renan martin and ask me to write this grammar now the present thing after uh, having been in uh, engineering field for 40 years in engineering nit i found now our students have stopped going to library yes. or uh, even the questions uh, my batch of people used to take so much extra sheets for writing also theory subject now they write only one page 
So five questions means maximum one page is five pages. So the kind of reading, the kind of writing has dramatically changed today. And uh, in that context uh, about this technical writing, as you, I have raised this question of grammar is required. You have answered that it is also required, but we are moving away. My student used to ask me, sir, it is a communication. The other side, if they can understand my what I write, why do you bother? The kind of uh, abbreviation, the kind of thing, simplicity they have brought in this communication. Okay, the second thing, you have given us three mantras. It should be clear, it should be concise, and it should be also the end user uh, centric uh, writing. That's what the three words you have used, clear, concise, and end user. But uh, the, also you mentioned about the, we should have the human psychology, what they expect and what they read, because you are going to explore when they come to the site or when they are right, uh, reading this, what is there in their mind using the digital technology? Because India also today, thanks to this pandemic, even in schools, now the teachers are worried because they want uh, animated things. They want videos to be uploaded. And that is where the communication is very important. The writers are becoming important to convey even a basic physics or basic uh, science things. Today, animation and videos, uh, that content is very important. So thank you both for uh, coming uh, on a virtual mode to talk to our students and faculty. Finally, you mentioned the content writers or blockers should also work under pressure. So one of the qualifications you have mentioned in this, I saw. So you're all put under stress. In spite of the stress we have given you to, uh, for example, uh, Usha is uh, late evening and uh, um, our, uh, from France, to our Radhika has come uh, put herself into trouble. In spite of that, both of you have talked excellently on behalf of the NITA University. Personally, I must thank both of you for your excellent presentation. Lastly, ours is a multidisciplinary university. We have medicine, dental, um, pharmacy. On the other side, we have engineering and things. Is there any curriculum we can think of? Because if suppose engineers, uh, computer science, for example, Radhika is a computer science turned, uh, uh, technical writer. So can we introduce some kind of electives? Because uh, now, based on your experience thing, if you can give us some kind of a curriculum, if there is any possibility of online courses, so that we want our uh, computer science people or information science or electronic people who know about Python and other kinds of languages, where they can use it to for technical writing. So additional things, requirements are in terms of curriculum, it would be useful. Similarly, from our health side, medicines and uh, dental and other people also can be given uh, some additional input. So my request, my request to both of you, can you think of some kind of curriculum as well as some kind of online courses, if it is there, it will be beneficial for our students to get job. Thank you once yeah. again. Thanks. Sure. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. For engineering, I believe like technical writing, like as I said, like, you know, anyone can become a technical writer. We have like engineers or PhD students who are technical writers as well. So definitely an elective. It could be like an optional. There are universities that are already teaching uh, like um, technical writing for journalism, engineering and other uh, courses as well. So we can definitely think of it and maybe just like a, a short course about like, you know, the basics and the skills they need to, um, it just opens them up to like other career opportunities. So uh, yeah, Radhika and I will like, you know, definitely think of it. Um, yeah, and thank you so much for that, uh, for all your kind words. Thanks, uh, Dr. Yeah. Nesra for uh, bringing both of you to this NITED Yes, Thank you very much, all the thank best. Thank you, sir. And uh, uh, that, that's a very good suggestion, sir. Um, I hope uh, we from uh, NITED MTB University uh, will host something, a program, or a course at least uh, in, in one of our uh, colleges. And uh, th thank you once again, sir. And I now ask uh, uh, convener of IAC, uh, Mr. Vivek Pai to give a uh, vote of thanks. Over to you, sir. Oh, well, friends, good afternoon. Uh, we are reaching the end of uh, today's session. A uh, very engrossing one. And uh, especially by both of them, it was uh, more of a 
very intertwined sort of a presentation by both of them, uh, Usha as well as uh, Radhika. Uh, in simple colloquial terms, we call it as Jugal Bandi. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's a very nice, uh, neat blend of uh, information being uh, put across to all of our students, faculty, and me also. And I think a lot of uh, the students would have been bit, bitten by the writing bug by now. Uh, it was it was a very interesting presentation by both of you. I think really, really, uh, it was very interesting and I should uh, thank you on behalf of uh, uh, the university, on uh, behalf of uh, NICO, uh, NIT Institute of Communication, uh, and also on my own behalf, because I have today collected a lot of information. I have jotted down a few things also. I think I should wish back to you all uh, for such a wonderful presentation. The, of course, the limited time, it, you know, this, this uh, short one, two hours of time will not be able to suffice to talk in terms of uh, all the uh, technical jargons and technical stuff and all those things and to bring all together uh, in a very concise and clear manner. Uh, you know, it is very difficult. See, it's oxymoron of saying that, you know, uh, be, uh, you know, what you call compact and concise and reach out. So that becomes a little difficult exercise, which you guys have tried to, uh, you know, balance very well. So I should thank you all again for that. And then, uh, of course, uh, I thank uh, our Honorable Chancellor, Dr. Satish Kumar Bhandari, sir, for uh, pulling out some time out of his very busy schedules. Of course, uh, uh, it is, it is uh, really appreciable of him to uh, take up uh, these kind of, uh, uh, you know, sessions for us by coming out and uh, giving all sorts of uh, inputs, guidance. And the best part is he has all the information to share on every platform that we invite him for. And uh, I really appreciate uh, uh, on behalf of uh, uh, the, the listeners today that uh, he has given us a perfect direction to this particular talk today. And he has set the right tone. And uh, Usha and uh, Radhika have taken it forward and uh, given a very beautiful insights into all this, pro I mean, this, this uh, technical jargon, technical writing and stuff like that. Okay, thank you, sir, for that excellent opening remarks and uh, setting the direction for the program. And uh, of course, uh, I should also thank uh, our president, uh, Institution Innovation Council, uh, Dr. Uh, Srinikitan, sir, for uh, uh, driving us all and uh, asking us to get, uh, you know, coming out with the very interesting programs like this. This I thought was the first time uh, in uh, Niti University that we have come out to come out with a topic, something like this. Uh, uh, so I should thank you, sir, for that opportunity given to all of our students and, uh, and the faculty. And I can't uh, thank enough my principal because uh, he uh, always gives me enough time to spare for uh, these kind of sessions. So thank you, uh, Dr. Shastri, sir. And then, uh, more than all, I think I must thank uh, the dear students because uh, all these programs will certainly be of value and uh, use to you. So since you have uh, uh, joined in good number, I think I should uh, really thank you all for sparing this time. Not sparing, but uh, trying to learn a good lot of stuff from this particular thing. And uh, uh, Nesra has already collected the uh, email IDs uh, and uh, if at all anybody has to have any sort of insights required further, for the, uh, you know, taking it forward, okay. you are always welcome to do so. Uh, reach out to Nesra, and uh, you also require to put up a feedback uh, onto, onto uh, about what you have learned. And, uh, uh, well, I should also thank uh, our uh, Director Staff uh, Development Center, Sadhna Deshmukh, ma'am, Ms. Supriya, Ms. Priya Salvin, Mr. Mahesh, uh, Ms. Savita, for the uh, fantastic job that they do back uh, in the back office, which goes almost unnoticed. Because, you know, the face is uh, either Nesra and the speakers out there, the beautiful ladies there, uh, Usha and uh, Radhika. And then, of course, uh, our president, we will be stealing the show. Uh, but uh, what happens to those uh, sitting uh, uh, behind the, you know, back office and doing all sorts of uh, preparing the brochures, connecting, and uh, getting people together and all that. So it's a thankless job. So I should thank you all uh, very, very uh, profusely, uh, Madam, and uh, your team. And then, of course, uh, uh, I should thank Raviraj for the welcome address. And uh, my special thanks are to Dr. Nesra for getting these uh, wonderful guests uh, at a very short notice, uh, Dr. Nesra, and, uh, and uh, trying to uh, talk, uh, get us to a 
bro i mean wonderful uh, session so i should thank you my special thanks are to you and uh, well i think uh, i have uh, thanked almost everybody and if thank i missed out someone <laughs> and if i missed out someone <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> i think i've not not missed out anyone uh, even if i missed uh, i think my heart goes out to thank you all of you okay thank you all and uh, over to you nisra thank you very much sir thank you very much sir uh, there is a small announcement to make uh, um, you know a, on the youtube link you will get uh, a feedback form please uh, go to the link uh, send us your feedback and uh, you will get uh, those who have registered already you will get um, a certificate of participation uh, thank you very thank you very much uh, for everyone who participated in this program thank you usha and uh, radhika once again Thank you, Dr. Naisra, like you know, for having us here. This was a fantastic opportunity. You made it happen. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Bye bye. Bye.